Okay. Hello and welcome to Polyglot Podcast. I'm Christian from Finland. Uh, currently, I'm in Rovaniemi recording this episode with uh, Patil. And uh, today, we will talk about her language background, her native languages, uh, something about her culture, like the where, where she's from and the culture is there and other language related things like um, the languages she's learning and as well all the resources and methods but in the beginning uh we'll have a special section so i will ask patil some basic questions in english and she will answer in both English and then in Armenian, which is one of her native languages. So let's begin. So what is your name? Hello, my name is Patil. Parev im Anunas Patile. How old are you? And what year were you born? I am 27. I was born in 1997. Uh, yes, Daregan. Where are you right now? Right now I'm in Syria, in Aleppo. Yes, Hima, Suryomechem, Halebi Mech. Where are your parents from? My parents are from here also, from Aleppo, but their parents, like my grandfather and grandmother, are from, it's a longer story. Um, um, okay. Where is your mom from? Okay. Um, my mom was born in Raslain. Just she was born there. It's, a, it's an area in Syria. And she has lived almost all her life in Aleppo. In my Rastanadze Raslain, Suryomech. Where is your father from? My father uh, was born here in Aleppo and he's from here. Armenian living in Aleppo, Syria. What? Hi, um, Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on. Go on. Okay. Hi, this Noren Halebene, Anshust Haye, Yev Abradze Polorgyanka Halep. Were you born in Aleppo? I'm sorry? Were you born in Aleppo? Yes, I was born in Aleppo. Ayo, yes, Halep Zanazem. What language do you speak with your parents? I speak Armenian with my parents. Yes, kahosim hayren im zanochki said. What about your grand uh, grandma and grand grandfather? Or let's say, what about your yeah. grandparents? My grandparents speak Armenian and Turkish together. They might uh, use some Arabic words too. But no, in general, Armenian and Turkish. Im, met haires ya met maires kahosin haireen kev kichma Turkeren. Do you have siblings? Yes, I have one brother. Ayo, yes, unim mek yechbair. What else could I ask before? Yeah, I, I think that was uh, that was good. We we can continue in uh, English now. Um, okay. Yeah. 
so I understood your like uh, both sides of your um, family have heritage from Armenia. That's like the Ar Armenian diaspora, and that that's why in in your family yes. Armenian is the native language. And because you were all born in Syria, you also speak like Arabic as native language. And because my ancestors were, um, they've lived some years in uh, Turkey, that's why they took that also. So that's why my grandparents also use Turkish in their language. Oh, okay. So they, they speak uh, like Armenian, Turkish, and Arabic, your like grandparents. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about your parents? Did they also speak Turkish or did your like grandparents move to Syria and they didn't like have the time to learn our, uh, Turkish? My parents, yeah, my parents um, sometimes used to speak with their parents Turkish, but with me and our family, no. It has always been only Armenian. Yeah. Okay. So with family members, only only Armenian at home. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Question about your name. Do you do, does your name have a meaning, like your first name and also your last name? Of course, my name Patil. Uh, it's Ar it's an Armenian name, and the meaning is snowflake. Snowflake. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, snowflake. Yeah. Yeah. It's Where so you born? Unique. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Were you born in winter, or uh, why did your parents give this name? Was no, I was like... born. In... Um, I was born in October, but my mother used to love this name. And she decided it for me before I was born. And when I was born and she saw that I'm my skin is so white. So she said that will be a suitable name. Okay. Yeah. And what about your last name? Does it have any um, etymology? Like most of the names have... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. I actually... I don't want to say something I'm not sure about. Sure, sure. It has always been, uh, uh, I don't know, like each people, each one say something. So I, I yeah. don't know. I actually oh, don't okay. know what it's Okay, know. because like you might know, most of the names come from a place, like there's a place or some, some are linked to a profession, like uh, the name Smith yes. in, in different languages. It's one of the most common uh, but okay, if you don't know, then it's okay. Uh, yeah, I've heard that it might be related to a profession. Profession. Yeah. Uh, suing or. Yeah, but okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, um, your last name is almost the same as my um, my cousin's mom's. Like uh, she's Zakarian with Z, not the Ch. Uh, so my yes, my, my, we have that here also. Yeah, so, so my uh, I have three cousins who are far, half Armenian. So, but oh, but that's not that's their cool. ha, that last name because uh, it's their mom's ethnic. So, yeah. Uh, and 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 my yes, cousins here. Yes, we have Chakarian. Uh, yeah, we have Zakar. Chakarian, Chakarian, Zakarian. Three are different. But yes, uh, we know Zakarian last name. Yeah, so they are not linked. The meaning it's like all all have different uh, etymologies, maybe. Yes, some are clear. Uh, the profession is clear when they pronounce it. We know it that it's related to this one, but yeah. ours we don't know. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And for people who don't know how many Armenians live in the world and which countries mostly, maybe you can uh, mention something about the Armenian diaspora, because we also have here in Finland, I don't know how many, but uh, there are certainly some, but not that many as in other countries. 
Oh, I didn't know about Finland. That's good. Yeah. So and, uh, we are in Syria, Lebanon, uh, Istanbul, Turkey, uh, United States, uh, Canada. And yeah, these are as far as I know. Yeah. And um, if I remember correctly, there are more Finland. Armenians outside of Armenia. Than inside. Um, I'm not aware of the amount or the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, sure. I, I just remembered. I, I've seen some numbers that in Armenia it's around like it was it four five million, and then the diaspora is maybe ten million or something. So that was yeah, it could be interesting. Could be. Yeah. Um. So something and about... of course the dialects are different. I don't know if you know that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've heard a bit from my cousin's uh, uncle about this, but uh, you can tell more, like which dialect you are speaking and what dialects are there. Yes, there are Eastern and Western dialects. Us uh, dias diasporas, we speak Western, and people who live in Armenia, they speak Eastern. Hmm. The differences are, uh, we do have the same um, letters, same alphabet, same script, but some letters are pronounced differently. In Western, we they we pronounce it differently than the Eastern. But when it comes to writing, we write the same way. Um, some words are different. The way we speak, we pronounce are different. We can understand each other. But sometimes we do not understand each other because us diasporas, we always use other words from our other language. Oh, yeah. So that will be d difficult for them. And they use Russian words in their language. And that is difficult for us to understand. Mm, okay, yeah. I remember my cousins used the word for Jews like sock in when I was a child. I, I it, it was funny because like I was thinking about the sock in English and they were always asking for sock. Uh, but later I understood uh, I, I learned that it's from Russian the word for Jews sock. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When when did you learn to read and write Armenian? Um, once I started learning, uh, maybe two years old, three years old, my mother taught me, and then I started going to school, and the, and we have Armenian schools here in Syria, so they also teach us Armenian, Arabic, and then English and French. Okay. Uh, did you go to Armenian school? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that because um, usually the ca it's the case that people from diaspora maybe can't read uh, or write their own language. But yes, uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, actually, we don't have that problem here in Syria, but uh, in other countries, yeah, I know that uh, this is a problem. And here, ninety-five percent of Armenians go to Armenian schools. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or let me at least talk about Aleppo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh my my cousins they they don't uh they can't read and write the Armenian language, but they speak, mm -hmm. but they cannot read and write. Mm. So in school I guess you already spoke Arabic because you were born in Syria and were speaking Arabic with like friends outside and like that. Yes, uh, but I wasn't able to speak until five or six years old because uh, there's a difficulty in Arabic language. The Arabic that you learn from school, from books, or even from cartoons on television is different than the Arabic that we speak, depending on the dialect. 
So you can see us Armenian children when we speak, we speak the uh, the MSA, uh, which is not the dialect. Till yeah. one or two years later, we can we we know that no, this is just we hear it, we study it, we use it when we uh, at school in the classes, and this we use it when we speak with people. So first you so speak I try uh, to MSA, and then you learn the dialect. Or how did did it go? Together, together, together. Yeah, yeah. But before school, uh, I guess you spoke the like Syrian dialect of Arabic. Uh, before school, I started going to school at. Uh, I was two and a, two and a half years old, so it happened all together. Oh, okay. So it's like preschool or kindergarten. Yeah, or? yeah kindergarten but from mm. kindergarten we start uh, learning alphabets in arabic armenian and english yeah okay so right away all in all the three yeah. different scripts <laughs> yes oh wow uh, I, I you were so young so i guess you don't remember how it was learning like three different scripts and learning to no i don't yeah, but do can you remember at what age you could read and write all the three different scripts and languages? Uh, like words or paragraphs? Well, let's start from words, maybe. Words, I was able to write uh, when I was six, seven years old small small yeah. words in all three languages and eight years old nine years old till i was um maybe 10 years old and i could write sentences as much as i could as a child to write in the three languages oh wow that's that's crazy <laughs> because uh usually it's even it's hard to learn just one just reading and writing in one language one script and then when you have three total different scripts, that's uh, quite unique. Yeah, I used to spend all, all my afternoon uh, periods after school studying. Yeah, because it was so much fun or you, you just had to learn so much? Uh, both. Okay, I don't so know about the system of school there, but here we usually have so much to do, like uh, homework to the next day. How much usually? How many hours per day? Um, I think uh, three hours. Like Maybe. more even, or less. Even when you were young, because here three here hours is... as uh, seven years old, six years old. So oh, three hours, that's a lot. Because here from first grade, which starts when you're seven years old, until maybe six, fifth or sixth grade, you have from half an hour to one hour homework. We don't have that much homework in Finland. But we get definitely more in secondary school, which is seventh to ninth grade and... um then no 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 secondary school is actually high school so anyways in 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 high school we have maybe max two or three hours but not not more mm. oh no so we have in, a year here when we are ninth grade or 12th grade the children usually study for eight hours uh, they are not children anymore but yeah, yeah we study for eight hours or something like that <laughs> Oh, wow. Of course, not all. It depends yeah. on person. Some people don't study. Yeah. But the ones who want high grade, high marks, yeah, we have to study. Yeah, okay. And during your school time, when did you start learning different languages in school? And did you have any optional languages that you took? Um. We started with these three. When I was seventh grade, French was added. And actually I took French from seventh grade to 12th grade, like six years. 
but you know when they teach us languages at school they just teach um, the grammar some vocab or something but you cannot actually speak that language even english uh, even if i started learning english since um, i was six years old but i couldn't i couldn't speak sentences I was able to write, to read, understand, but when it comes to speaking, it's something different because we don't because we don't have a speaking session in classes. No, the teachers used to. I don't know about now. I think it, like in some schools, the thing uh, the things has changed, but uh, in mine and um, in that at that time, the teacher used to speak Arabic in class, and when it comes to reading or yeah, she she will use English. So you don't have but like nothing di was dialogues. Optional. You don't practice with your classmates. Yeah, we do have the dialogues and practice, but speaking, no. Maybe just one sentence. Yeah. No, not more than that. Yeah. Okay. Um, your school. Because it was our, you went to Armenia. Did you go to Armenia school your whole time that you, during your whole yes. like education? So, yes. were part of the subjects in Armenian and like part in Arabic? Or was it all in Armenian? And then, uh, like, how was it? All the subjects were in Arabic, all plus. We had one subject, which is Armenian. That was it. Oh, okay. We study Armenian language, just. But mathematics, science, um, everything else was in Arabic. Yeah, okay. And what do you think? Um, can you also talk about all those other topics in Arme Armenian? Did you learn those? Because you all, all, only had those in Arabic. Um, like, uh, let's say science in Armenian. Did I know that? or is Yeah, you because you, you had those classes, math, maths and biology and everything in Arabic. So did you learn also on your own somehow the vocabulary about more like specialized topics that you might not speak about with your parents that often? I got you. Uh... Yes, this happens um, in two ways here. Here, we don't just have schools, Armenian schools. We also have a scouts, uh, several scouts that Armenian children go to. Like, it's um, once a week. There, uh, um, all, all those uh, hard vocabularies that um, you, you meant, we used to take it there, but not as a lesson, like take this paper and study it. No, we used to do uh, challenges, question and answers. Um, they used to explain us about t different topics. And this is how I got my, like, I got richer vocabulary. And do you think all kids take it, all Armenian speakers, or is it just like some like you? Um, seventy percent are are in scouts, Armenian scouts. Okay, okay, that's that's good because I think here, uh, yeah. people who have uh, one or two immigrant parents, they their like native language isn't that like good as the like when they learn Finnish and finish everything in school, so they might have some problem expressing things in their own native language because they haven't learned them and they haven't had any like tutors and after after school like classes. So that's really good you learn there uh, with the tutors. Yeah. Um, so after, after school, did you go to university or what did you do then? Yes, um, I went to university and I studied dental laboratory it's an institute that lasted two years and yeah. of course I graduated after two years yeah and 
were you always interested in uh, languages and did you how did you pick your profession did you think it's better uh to get that profession and as as a hobby uh continue like uh, learning languages um when i was a child and i started already with three languages that time I, it, it wasn't a thing because like most of us were like that starting with two or three languages and then when i was 19 years old i also had um, interest in bollywood movies so i started watching a lot and i without without like um, unconsciously i started picking words mm. and learning year by year the same thing with turkish again i was a child but at that time i didn't know that th this can be a profession or a, uh, i was doing out of hobby out of i enjoy sitting at home and watching uh, things in different languages yeah 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 still i yeah i was um, i became an adult and i have to go to university unfortunately here we don't have that variety of uh, things to study like if you want to study something related to language you have two options um english literature or french literature and i didn't want any of them because i i, I always don't i felt like um I can't feel happy or relaxed if I uh, put my, if I uh, put myself in only one language. I felt like I I always love to learn and speak and uh, study many languages, not only one. So I chose uh, I chose something completely different, dental things, dental laboratory institute, and I studied that. And um, after I graduated, I tried to work in that field, but I just couldn't do it. It, yeah. it just wasn't me. And I stopped. And since then, I do nothing related to it. I stopped and uh, I said, now I know what I want. I want to continue learning languages and teaching, of course. Yeah. So currently... It, it, this wasn't hard. This wasn't easy. But yeah, I understand. I'm happy yeah. with whatever I did. Yeah. So currently, you you teach languages. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you teach, and uh, which which ones? Um, I used to teach in institutes. Uh, I used to teach English and some, sometimes Arabic, uh, for uh, Armenian children, and yeah. And then I stopped, and I started uh, to, uh, giving uh, private lessons in uh, English also, Turkish and Urdu, and um, Mandarin for beginners. Yeah. Where did you learn all, all your current languages? Um, okay, I'll start one by one. Um, it, Turkish, I learned it from series. Even if my parents know it, but as I, as I told you, we we didn't choose to speak. But if I had a question like, mom, what does this word mean? She will answer me just like that. So yeah, I learned it from TV and uh, I can speak perfectly. And uh, Hindi and Urdu again uh, from TV till I was almost 25 years old. And I felt like I can understand and I can express myself in that language, but I cannot read or write. So uh, I decided to start taking courses, online courses, because here in Aleppo, we don't have people who know Hindi or Urdu. Uh, I took courses and I learned the script in both languages. And now I can read and kind of write in Hindi and Urdu. Uh, Spanish, um, I started learning it uh, almost two years ago, but I enrolled in a course. In uh, Aleppo. Plus, yeah, in Aleppo. Uh, plus watching series. Uh, German, again, a course. I, I learned, like, I took 
I was uh, IELTS level and then I stopped and now I'm I'm doing it again and hopefully I will continue this time Mandarin again of course yeah yeah that's a lot of uh, languages are all, all in your family language like enthusiast or do you also have other friends there in Aleppo who are who share the passion for languages or are you the only one Unfortunately, I don't have friends that share the passion, and it's not something common here. Um, to a degree that, I mean, they say, "What? What is? She, what are you doing this? Why are you doing it? You're not going." Yeah, and your your parents say, are are you friends. Learning? Who who do my that? friend? Oh, okay. Friends and all people around me. Are you learning Mandarin, Hindi? What? What are you going to do with it? And yeah. they, they kept saying this all my life till now. But no, my father actually supported me. And he, because he loves languages. And he used to do, used to do kind of the same one when he was uh, young. He used to read uh, books, watch uh, movies, and listen to songs in different languages. So yeah, I took that from him. So yeah. He he supported me in this, but people around me. Yeah, it's it's quite common in my within my guests that they are like the only ones, and all the people surrounding them are like, "What are you doing? Why these random languages? Why so many languages?" So, yeah. <laughs> and from all of these languages, what do you think? Which have been difficult and easy for you and why mm. the problem is that I learned Arabic when I was a child so I, I, I didn't feel that it is difficult but it is actually if I was um, I was Armenia living in Armenia and I try to learn Arabic, I think it, uh, it must have been so difficult. So I didn't felt that. But yeah, it is it is difficult um, when it comes to the MSA. Uh, for me, learning um, Mandarin, but uh, just the re uh, reading and writing characters. Pronunciation wasn't that uh, hard for me um but uh, the characters i was i was able to memorize characters but if i stop they all vanish so i have to do it again but i enjoy it. that's why i continue even if it's difficult and um yeah though th that was the most difficult maybe a little bit german and i think that is because um I don't I don't immerse myself in German. I just learned it with textbook. Mm. Uh, I, did, I didn't watch series or songs. With other languages, uh, I didn't do that. I immersed myself, but this one, no. So that's why I felt it's difficult. And easy. Um, Turkish was easy. Because um, I don't remember myself uh, studying it, and I just found out that I can speak it maybe people will, won't agree with me maybe it's because uh, I started watching a series and I, I I do watch till now it's been 20 years maybe that's why I learned yeah mm, and the Spanish again um, but not the conjugations those were difficult but reading and uh, pronunciation writing yeah easier than other languages yeah so how many scripts can you read and write now so armenian arabic latin devanagari uh well chinese you cannot probably count because there are like tens of thousands how do what do you think how many characters do you recognize in that Actually, I, I stopped for uh, one or two years, but when I was studying, I was like a 
HSK2 level. So it must be 300 characters. Yeah, yeah. Around 300 characters. Yeah. Well, that's many, quite many um, scripts you, you can read and write. That's what do you think about Devanagari? Uh, for me, some if I if I don't read for a while, some combinations I forget forget, and I'm like, uh, what was this again? Do you have any problem problems with that, or do you read so much that you remember all of them? Combinations? You mean uh, especially the half letters and the like? Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. when they merge the basic letters and they become something a I, bit different. I might take a few seconds, but uh, I will figure it out. Yeah. Um, which, do you, do you have some new languages in mind that you want to learn in the future? Or are you focusing now to improve the current ones? Currently, I'm focusing to improve my current languages. But of course, uh, I want to learn as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand. I have the same same issue here. But yeah, I think it's. But no, currently I'm not going to start any new language till I am yeah. satisfied with the others. Yeah, and for you, what what does it uh, mean to when 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 will you be sat satisfied with the current ones? Do you have any like level in mind, like when you can speak freely or? Yes, that's it. When I can speak freely. Um, well, each language I aim differently, but um, in general, when I can speak, I can express myself. Yeah. In, but uh, that so... doesn't mean that my only goal from learning languages is speaking. No, I really enjoy listening. I, I, I enjoy that m more than speaking. Oh, okay. Listening and understanding, it's so important for me. I feel happy when I yeah. understand something without without subtitles. Yeah. So you would also be um, satisfied just understanding everything or with those language, languages you listed, do you want to be able to both uh, understand and speak both? I wouldn't say no if I can do both, uh, but I'm trying not to be hard on myself. And let's say to understand, listen and understand 80% and to speak 60%. Yeah. Okay. I, I always give percentages. I don't know. That's I No, think. it's uh, <laughs> fun. What about reading and writing? Uh, reading, I want it to be 100%. And uh, writing, spelling or writing paragraphs, essays? Yeah, writing paragraphs, yeah. Um, I think if I can speak, I can write. Yeah. It's the yeah. last one <laughs> in the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's usually the thing. <laughs> writing is like the last in the priority list it um, doesn't mean it doesn't, not, not, you know it matters to me but the others are more important yeah yeah the same for me the same for me uh, for me all the four are also important but writing the least because yeah speaking and understanding and really it's hard it's hard, actually hard to pick it's hard to pick because, because they, uh, are, they are all related yeah yeah. In okay, before asking uh, what I had in mind, I'll ask more about um, the resources. So you have already mentioned courses. What about uh, like you said you have watched many shows? Where is it? YouTube, Netflix? Where have you watched all all the different show series and films? Um, till I was 15, 16, 17, it was all on TV. Turkish, Bollywood, uh, Arabic, uh, was all 
on TV. I had like one uh, Bollywood channel and three, four Turkish channels. I, I just watched them because I don't have another option. Yeah. After that, uh, when the internet was common and we started using it, I started downloading series, uh, yeah, and watching it, yeah, from Netflix and yeah. other. Do you have Do you have any good suggestions of? You don't list need to list everything, but maybe a few really good ones you you really enjoyed in some of those languages. Like uh, the names of the films or series you really liked. Hmm. Oh, there are many. Um, Bollywood movies that I like. You mean for learning languages, or I just had no, just which you enjoyed because that's one that motivated you to learn those languages so motivated me oh I, this one i don't know Daniel well it doesn't it i mean i mean you mentioned that you were watching all these shows so maybe just some that you really liked but i i guess you maybe didn't think at the time okay i'm now learning this language because i enjoy this just exactly. some some of some of your uh, favorite films or series if if, if anything comes into okay. your mind okay in Turkish we have uh, I enjoyed Kara Sevda Kara Para Ashk um, uh, Ufak Tefek Cinayetler what else I enjoyed um, now it's uh, uh, we have um Disney Bahçe and uh, Leila. I'm watching these two now. These are good. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Bollywood movies. Like I've seen maybe millions of them. <laughs> um, Amir Khan's movies are great. Like uh, PK, Three Idiots or... Um, what else? Um, Tare Zami Par. Maybe old Shah Rukh Khan movies. Or uh, we have Jab We Met uh, for Shahid Kabul and Karina. And um, maybe some comedy movies. That I enjoyed, uh, Hera Feri. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you use any app applications? Like, do you uh, only just, memorize? Uh, or... When I learn Chinese. Oh, no, no, I don't. I tried. I tried to learn Italian years ago on Duolingo, but I stopped then. But like any I other apps, you, you said Ch Chinese or Chinese you use something? Yeah, yeah, but it's not an app that teaches you, no. Um, it's um, like I write a word and it gives me examples and um, explains the root of the character, uh, how to write it. I can even practice writing it and uh, I can uh, I can click and hear the pronunciation sentences, words. That, that's the app I use. So the uh, online is it online Chinese. diction. Uh, what what was the name? Purple Chinese purple purple culture. Purple culture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any other things about uh, your methods or resources to add now? Uh. My methods has always been, as I said, watching, because when I watch, I learn so many things. Uh, words they use in different contexts and different. For example, when I when I watch a Turkish series, they usually show us a rich family and family that are not very well with financially. 
So this family uses other vocabs and this sure. one some others. It, this is how you I can learn both. When I come to speak, I can mix them and speak. Uh, the same applies on um, Bollywood or something else. Uh, so I learn different vocabularies from different contexts. I I, I watch uh, I can watch anything, and I can learn from their body language, how they move, how they do this. And when I speak, maybe it will help me to uh, to convey this thing, the body language. I can learn also um, um, the correct pronunciation. And uh, I can learn, um, I was going to say something. Mm -hmm. I forgot, but there, there was something yeah. else that I prefer uh, watching, learning by watching. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I can sometimes mimic that, that's help. I, I don't do it always, but sometimes I do. Out of fun, out of practice, yeah, both. Um, huh, uh, yeah, I remembered. Uh, most importantly, when they use uh, filler words, filler mm. words aren't all, you, you cannot take them from other textbooks or apps or I don't know, but uh, the, the things they use, the phrases they make, the words they repeat or make it longer, shorter, these all help. Okay, I think that was all about uh, methods and resources. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to ask also about um, in in Aleppo, uh, so there are a lot of other Armenian uh, speak, speaking uh, families as well. Or, yes. Yeah. Do, so in your fa uh, friend circle, for example, do you have like, all kinds of uh, people like uh, Arabic speakers, Armenian, or are the communities more like uh, mainly with each other? Or is it like uh, you have friends from all the different communities? Yeah, I have Armenian friends and I also have Arabic speaking friends. Um, I, we usually know each other, Armenians, from schools or scouts or uh, family things, relatives. Um, the Arabic-speaking ones, uh, be, again, from schools or um, work or anywhere else. Yeah, I have both. Yeah. We do have both. Maybe other Armenians we, will prefer to have only Armenian friends. We have this thing. But in my case, no. And yeah. when you encounter like Syrians, like who are Arabic speakers, what are usually the first things they know about Armenia or the Armenian language? I, I guess it's quite well known if there are a lot of Armenians or what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, Christian uh, Arabic speaking Syrians they are all familiar and there are Armenians and then. but maybe other religions maybe they will confuse uh, us with uh, Kurdish people but uh, if we tell them that no we are not Kurdish we are Armenian they will get it and yeah they, they all know about us and um, they can they say the Hello, word, Parev, and how are you, word, inch pieces. Okay. They all know that. Yeah. What are, like, uh, besides those words that they know, what are usually the first things people say when you're, when you say you're Armenian? Um, they say that we are hardworking people, especially uh, our men. Like fathers and uh, they are so good at their professions. Um, uh, they say we, our language is uh, like it, it has a melody and we sing while we speak. Maybe some people say that. Uh, so um, sometimes they say that we 
speak so loud and sometimes they say we speak so uh, low that no one can hear us okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, we're calm um, we have our own family things uh, rules and uh, uh, we are more strict maybe sometimes um, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and been? we we pronounce yeah. English better than uh, Arabic uh, speakers. Oh, okay. Like generally better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. When people are gonna choose um, an English teacher for their children, they prefer choosing Armenian over uh, Arabic speaking person. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Have, have not you all ever... again but... yeah yeah i understand but uh it, it's the same here i think uh like 90 percent of Finns speak finnish as their mother tongue like me but there are five percent who speak swedish and usually the swedish mm. speakers are like generally better pronounced uh, pronouncing english because of course swedish is closer it's in the same language family so maybe a bit similar situation but yeah of course not every swedish speaker here in finland speaks better english um have you ever been to armenia yet interesting yes in, in 2018 uh we've been there for on a vacation just for one month and that was the only time I have been out of Syria. Yeah, okay. How was it that one month in Armenia? Where did you go there? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, we visited a lot of uh, places, historical and non-historical, like cafes or restaurants. Um, uh, we saw our relatives that live in USA. Um, we met each other there and um, it was a great experience um, me, me seeing something when we compare Syria to Armenia there are a huge, dif a huge differences that's why I was so happy there you feel there are a lot of opportunities um, you can go out and walk without uh, getting bored you can be there stay uh, till late night hours uh, communicate with Armenians hear their pronunciation the words they use seeing a lot of tourists was so interesting for me yeah. I walk at street and I see a lot of tourists from all different countries it was so fun because here I am we don't have tourists yeah, yeah. We used yeah. to before, but not now. Yeah, before the war. Yeah. Um. So, did you visit all the beautiful monasteries? I forgot the names. I, I was planning in one point going to Armenia and Georgia, but uh, COVID came then, and I I, I couldn't. But um, I guess you made a tour around. Yes. Both. Yeah, we went to uh, Karni Kerart. Uh, um, where else did we go? Yeah, we we visited uh, almost as much as we could, even if they were far from Yerevan, uh, where we stayed. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I think my cousin's family is from how do you say Jumri? 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 Yeah. Gyumri, yeah, yeah. Their mom's family Gyumri. had to fl flee Gyumri uh, after the earthquake. Was it a eighty nine or mm. nineteen ninety? Like early nineties, I guess. So that's when their um, mom came to Finland. Um, and. Here in Finland, I I think also like no one knows about Armenia almost anything, but I remember Armenia was the first officially Christian country 
in the year was it 300 or something right. like that 301 yeah um are armenians all armenians mainly like christians in syria yes yeah not mainly all are christians yeah okay um yeah what other things um should people know about armenia or armenians in your uh opinion if they don't know anything about Armenia, what things should people know about Armenia or the language? Uh, they should know that Armenia is a really beautiful country and uh, you can enjoy a lot there and you can see a lot of historical things that uh, we have um, uh, we have authors, uh, stories, books that really need to be read. And our language script is so unique. It is not similar to any other. Uh, so, and we have um, a lot of letters, a lot of uh, uh, letters that uh, we can pronounce like ch, uh, 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 maybe it, it's not in other languages. And, um, um yeah it it deserves to be known yeah i think i've uh asked all the questions i i wanted is there still something i didn't cover that you want to mention now in the in the end mm, i don't know i don't think so yeah maybe you can tell Maybe to give a shot to try to learn Armenian. I know even if you're not gonna use it, maybe unless you travel to Armenia. <laughs> what 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 do you what would you um recommend? How could people learn Armenian? Do you know any good resources? That's the thing. Actually, there are no resources for Western Armenian, especially. The Armenian that we speak, even if you, even if it's not an option in Google Translate, it will give you in Western only. Okay. Uh, sorry, Eastern. Yeah. yeah. Western, hard to find. I don't know myself. Uh, we, we have the books that we, we used to study from at schools. Other than those, I don't, I don't know what uh, you can find on social media. Maybe the Eastern one used in Armenia is way easier to learn. Not yeah, easier, well, but there are there are resources. Yeah. yeah, you can use. So maybe someone just needs to use those and maybe later like uh, get a tutor from iTalk or from some platform who can teach the Western Armenian then. Yes, and there are influencers on social media, YouTube, Instagram, maybe, and they can, uh, yeah, use it, use it too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Patil, for the interesting discussion. There, the, there were a lot of uh, new things to me, and I, I'm, I'm sure all the listeners enjoy the discussion as well. So thank you, and thanks for all the listeners and see you in the next episode. Bye.